Oh, hi, it's Susie the Silly Scientist, and I'm here digging in my kitchen recycling bin for today's kitchen science. We need to find some recycled products. Oh, and I have hit the jackpot. I have found all kinds of plastic trays. Now this is exactly what I'm looking for. I want the little recycling symbol on the bottom to have a six on it. Oh, there you are. All right, so I've got all my number six plastic. Now this number six plastic is something I actually really try to avoid buying. It's taken me a while to collect these pieces because I just don't care for messing up our environment with all this wasted plastic. But, you know, this used to be connected with donuts inside. I bought some bulk crushed red pepper. They sometimes sell spices like this. This was a lid to a tin um, baking dish, those disposable ones and so forth. So you can keep can find these pretty easily. Now this number six plastic is also used in other situations like for refrigeration and freezing. It's used, it's used in car parts and instrument panels. If you have it in the foam version, it's used in car seats even. So it is used for a variety of purposes by our engineers and designers of different products in our culture. All right, so today we are going to make shrinky dinks. Have you ever heard of a shrinky dink before? Well, I have because back in 1973, when I was a little kid, the year my sister was born, these became a new toy or a new craft that hit the market and you can still buy them today but you really don't need to spend any money on them because huh, unfortunately we all end up buying some of this waste plastic. All right, so I recently made a shrinky dick and you can see where I cut it out. You can kind of see the black marker a little bit. That is the size of the angel that I colored. And then I put it in my oven and it became this size. It shrank into a dinky little angel. Ah, a shrinky dink. Now this is very flimsy plastic. This is very hard. I would have a hard time breaking this. Where this, I can easily take my scissors to, and we'll be doing that a little bit, and I can just cut it right up into lots of little pieces. All right. So we're going to make a shrinky dink. Something to keep in mind, you could make these into like necklaces or little charms if you took a hole punch and put a little hole in the top of it or a Christmas ornament maybe or a little tag to hang on your backpack. So if you'd like to make them into something usable rather than just a little token like this, we're gonna use a hole punch for that purpose. All right, so here was my original angel. This was printed out in color, which is one option. So you could put something, here's another angel I had, where I could tape this on the backside, and if I liked those colors, I could just recolor it on the plastic using my permanent markers, such as Sharpies, and make my angel. Of course, you could print out some clip art on the computer. I printed out these dinosaurs. Coloring books are another source. These are kind of big for the plastic that I have, but I did choose one piece today. This train, I cut off the bottom of one of those coloring book pages. So I am going to tape that train to this big piece. And it doesn't matter what kind of tape you use, but you will want to attach it with tape so it doesn't move around. All right, so here's a real challenge for a scientist. You gotta find the end of the tape, of course. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna put a piece of tape on this side and a piece of tape on the other side. So there is my tape on the back. Inside I can see my train and I am going to color like my wheels. I'm going to make black and I will color the insides of those yellow and so on. So I am going to just color away here for a second. All right, so I'm working on the engine here. Oh, I think I'm gonna have a green and orange engine. And of course, we're gonna color that window with yellow because 
the lights would be on in there so that the engineer could see or the sun would be shining through. So I think a nice yellow would work well on this. Now, this is going to appear to be like magic because this big train is going to reduce in size. In fact, I'm going to use this activity with my eighth graders in pre-algebra because when we study scale factor, they can figure out how much their shape reduced in size. We study dilations and a dilation is either a reduction or an, an enlargement of a figure. So shrinky dinks are a great example of a reduction. Now, shh, don't tell them that these should shrink to about one third the size they were. That means the scale factor is one third. So there's a little pre-algebra for you out there in case in the future you take that course and you want a little head start. You can show your teacher how much you know. All right, finish up coloring this, and we'll see what happens in the oven. I've got my nice, great, big train. I made this cute little dinosaur, and I was just finishing one that I was drawing without a pattern. I mentioned it could be Christmas ornaments, so I was making a stocking here, and I thought I'd make one for Susie, the silly scientist. Add my name on the top there. Okay, so the next step in making the shrinky dinks is to simply cut them out. And like I said, just a normal pair of scissors, even those little kid scissors, will easily cut through this number six plastic. All right, so there is my Christmas stocking, and I want this to be a Christmas ornament, so I'm going to take my hole punch and put a little hole on the top so I can put a string or a ribbon in there. So I'm just gonna finish cutting out all of my designs. I'm gonna just take that paper off and get it out of the way as I trim around my dinosaur with all his little scales. Now how are we going to take this flimsy big plastic and turn it into these strong, small, shapes, these shrinky dinks. Well, I hate to spoil it, but it's really not magic. It's science. Now, manufacturing engineers have realized that this polystyrene, which is what this number six plastic is really called, is made up of many monomers that are found naturally in strawberries, cinnamon, coffee, beef, lots of products that we are familiar with. Okay, now that's their natural occurring state, but they have figured out that if you put a lot of these monomers, mono in Latin means one, together, to form a polymer, poly in Latin means many, they can create polystyrene. Now, these polymers are kind of all bunched together and they're kind of random and that's their natural way of being. But they have decided in science that if they're heated, and then rolled out and cooled, they can help keep them in a form like this. Now what we're gonna do is reverse that process. These polymers want to go back to their natural state. And all we have to do is apply a little heat to plastic number six, polystyrene, and we can turn our little sheets of plastic into a shrinky dink. Let's go check out what happens in the oven. Now, anytime we do kitchen science, we have to be sure we don't ruin our family's kitchen. So today, you either need some parchment paper or some tin foil so that mom's cooking sheet doesn't get ruined. So I'm gonna use parchment paper today because I think it'll be a little easier to see what's going on in our oven. Onto the cookie sheet goes my parchment paper. I want to be sure these are laying in one layer not overlapping or as they heat they'll melt together and I don't want my train attached to my dinosaur. So whether you drew your own or you trace them with some pictures from a coloring book or offline, place them on your parchment paper. They're going to go into our 350 degree preheated, be sure it's already hot, oven for roughly two minutes, no more than three minutes, and we'll see if we can get a video of what's happening in the oven. 
All right, now I would not suggest opening your oven while you're doing this because you want to maintain that 350 degrees and I'm letting out a lot of heat. But I want you to see how my shrinky dinks are just rolling up. They look disastrous. Oh no, I'm not sure the shrinky dink magic is working. Ooh, I don't know about that stocking. We'll see how it turns out. Now that's the thing about science. It doesn't always go right the first time. In fact, all of our inventions come about from redoing and experimenting over and over again. That's what scientists are known for doing. So here's our first one. I'm thinking maybe that wasn't a number six plastic because it didn't want to shrink and it didn't turn clear like the backgrounds of these. So I just remade them. The train turned out great the first time, but it was made from a different piece than the others. Finally, I'd like to talk to you about how scientists, real scientists, are using this idea of shrinky dinks. They're using it in nanotechnology. Nanotechnology. Well, let's look at that word, nano. Nano, in Latin again, means one billion. If I was to take my meter stick and cut it into a billion parts, oh my, they would be very, very, very small not even microscopic small, even smaller than that. A billionth of this would be a nanometer. Well, in nanotechnology, they are studying very, very small structures, and they're usually studying this with atoms and molecules being broken down into little sub pieces. So nanotechnology is being used by engineers, biologists, physicists, chemists, it's being by, used by material scientists, and it's even being used in electronics. One place electricians or electrical engineers are using it is when they're designing technology that needs to be very, very small. We all know our pieces of technology get smaller and smaller and smaller. I mean, the first computer was gigantic and filled a room, and now we can carry a computer around in our pockets with our phones. So they have used this shrinky dink material to place wires on it, but they can't get them close enough together to fit in small cases. But if they put the wires on shrinky dink material and they shrink the plastic, those wires become much, much closer together. Isn't that just amazing? The other thing scientists are learning is that when they're working with this nanotechnology, sometimes the properties of some of our elements change. For example, gold. Well, we think of gold as being, obviously, Gold, but they have found that sometimes it's red and blue when they're working with it in a really small increment. They've also found gravity does not really affect nanotechnology in the way it does other things. Um, sometimes scientists are taking these extremely large patterns that would be very hard to print and would be very expensive to print, and they can print them in this small nano technology on shrink using the shrinky dinks, and then they can study those patterns more. Um, effectively without spending quite so much money. One last way they're using this nanotechnology that I just find fascinating is, you know, right now we do most of the detecting of our diseases through blood, and they are investigating if it's possible through your human breath, how simple and pain-free, can they detect diseases within your human body? I'll point post some YouTube links on nanotechnology if you'd like to know a little bit more about that. But anyway, whether you're into the science or not, you can have a fun time making shrinky dinks in your own oven using recycled materials. Did that make any sense at all? Nanotechnology. <laughs> Polymers is not a thing. What? Polymers, not polymers. Polymers? Polymers, not polymers. Polymers. Oh God, do I have to redo that whole section? No, I can't say it wrong. You Polymers. Always, you always said it wrong. I've corrected you like 20 times. Okay, Did sorry. I say it right that time? <gasps> and Don't I cut me. it into, oh, I said million. All right, so one last idea. If you are not, I lost my, I lost